I'm Chosen Architect, and this is All The Mods 9, and today we jump into some fancy mechanics of new Metacraft. So, I hope you guys are ready. Now, jumping back into some more All The Mods 9, the last few episodes I've been showing off some of the cool things that you can do with the creative items that we've obtained via the All The Mods 9 in-game progression. And well, today we're going to expand on that even more with more new Metacraft, and we will be soon getting into more stuff. So if Pneumatocraft is not your thing, then of course you can probably skip to the next episode. Well, that assumes that the next episode is out and you're subscribed. Now I have a feeling though, you're not gonna wanna miss this one as I'm gonna talk about elevators and all kinds of cool things that you can actually do with Pneumatocraft. And now that the hard part of Pneumatocraft is out of the way and that is maintaining pressure, well, we can actually experiment with some of those fun things. Now, last episode, we went over this really oddly positioned hammer. Yeah, this thing right here that I have in my inventory, the pneumatic hammer. And I want to work our way towards getting access to this thing. It's pretty darn cool what we can actually do with this. And this is a really nice tool and can be probably one of the fastest tools in your arsenal. The cool part is, is I'm kind of needing a silk touch tool and this can become my silk touch tool. That way I don't have to go through the process of remaking another all the modium tool. So now back to the actual fun stuff I was talking about. Let's go ahead and build ourselves an elevator because to be able to utilize this tool, we're gonna need an area where we process oil um, and we're gonna need a drill. And I believe the drill bits right here to get to the netherite drill bit, which is the best one. This requires us to have an unassembled, unassembled netherite drill bit, which requires some netherite and a diamond drill bit. And then if we go even further than that, we will then see that to get a diamond drill bit, we are going to need lubricant, eight buckets of lubricant. Now you can go about getting lubricant quite easily, actually using the Amadron tablet that we used last episode to basically trade emeralds for a bucket of lubricant. And that is definitely a viable option for this, but I want to set up the actual thermal processing plant that allows us to get several other things as well. Now, because we've already done Ad Astra, we've already set up oil production. Um, and so we do have access to oil that is out in the ocean being pumped in through industrial foregoing fluid lasers. Well, yes, did I mention that we're about to be refining the oil? Oh yeah, I, I should probably mention that. Okay, okay, back to the fun stuff. This room behind me, I actually want to sort of mine out and I've already sort of gotten this prepped out. Um, up here, you can see I have an elevator collar and this is about the height that this can go up. It does appear that above the elevator collar we have one, two, three, four, five, six blocks that this goes up, meaning that the base will be able to travel one, two, three, four, five blocks up in total. And yes, we're about to set up an elevator from Pneumatocraft. Now for this elevator to work, you're gonna need a few things. You're gonna need an elevator base. You're gonna also need however many elevator collars that you have access to. And then you're gonna need these uh, elevator frames, which are gonna be the corner bits. Um, and then you're going to need pressure onto the base. So let's place our elevator base here. Let's um, actually, let's place it one further down. So it's a little bit easier for us to get into. Um, and we'll place the elevator. If I can get this place, let's place the elevator right here on the bottom. Um, and then we'll put our elevator collar here. And by default, it automatically knows this is one. It's the only one that exists. And then we can put the other elevator collar up here. Now, this isn't connected yet, but as soon as we put in some frames, this should start to work. And notice I'm placing in the frames just like so. And now that we have our frames in place, if I stand in the middle, we can fall through. Um, I should be able to, to replace this and it, it should detect connected to these frames that this is now floor two. And this is pretty darn cool. So let's go ahead and break this block and let's get some pressure run down here. And the way I'm handling pressure, by the way, if you haven't catched the last few episodes, is we are actually using a creative compressor that we've achieved um, and we're using this to maintain 5.9 bar and then we are using uh, advanced pressure tubes to send the pressure around which is probably one of the best things you can do um, especially whenever you're connected to a creative compressor like this and all we have to do is grab some pneumatic tubing i guess i can just search tube and there we go so we should be able to route this down to the bottom, just like this, and through this loop here, and connect it into our pipes right here. Bam, so now we are connected, and this is going to start filling with pressure. Now, this right here does have some upgrades we can put in here. 
Um, there's a recharge upgrade, which I don't think we really need, but speed upgrades. I think speed upgrades would be pretty nice. This allows us to go a bit faster whenever we travel up through this after calling our elevator. Now, at the moment, this is pretty ugly. Uh, I will I will say that the uh, the look of this is not great, so I will definitely be decorating this, but let's go ahead and give it a test and see if it works. So we walk into the elevator, and then we go to floor two by just right-clicking, and there we go. We are now at floor two, and we have all of this room right here to kind of work with. Um, and yes, I can decorate this, and I could add more floors technically if we really wanted to, but I think this is kind of a neat little thing. Look at that, that's, that's pretty cool. Now the icing on the cake is gonna be our pneumatic door. So to be able to get the pneumatic door, we need a pneumatic door base that goes to the top of the door. And you notice right there that it just like pulled back, which is kind of interesting. If I place my door right here in, and I put this in, it is going to actually grab a hold and retract the door. Uh, now for us to extend the door, uh, because it's going to always stay retracted, we actually need to hook up pressure to this. Um, and then whenever we get close to it, the door will just automatically open, which is kind of neat. Now, when using the pneumatic door, we're going to have this ugly pipe right here. And I don't necessarily want ugly pipes just strung about. I know we have them here. This one actually is really nice. But in the wall next to a door, uh, this just doesn't seem that good. Uh, but this is functional. When we walk up close, we'll notice the door swings open. That's just, just what we want. We want to be able to walk in here. How do we actually make this pipe look good? Well, that's where this camouflage uh, applicator comes into play. Now, what we need to do to get this to work is you right click, not shift right click, you right click on the block, um, and then you are able to have the item in your inventory and then right click here, and that will apply it to that that pipe. And so now this is technically camouflaged, um, and we should be able to do this with the concrete as well uh, that is in the floor here. So having pipes just in the wall and stuff, not really something that we have to do anymore. Look at this, boop, we can just place the camouflage right there. And that pipe is ready to go. Now, breaking this, if I want the block back, I could just boop and, and try to break it and it just gives me the block back. That's pretty cool. Um, and we can also uh, shift right click and the camouflage applicator actually clears what it currently has in its store. So pretty cool. I think this is really cool to be able to camouflage this. And there are a couple of things that you can actually camouflage. Um, so you can do tubes, you can do pneumatic door bases. So like this block right here could be camouflaged to look like everything else too. Um, and then you can also do the charge station and heat pipes as well. And heat pipes are kind of ugly, so that's kind of nice that you can camouflage those. But look at this. So now we have a door that opens up and we can go up to floor two. And there we go. We now have another room set up and ready to go. Oh, and another thing that I probably want to do is... Let's go ahead and actually swap the location of our elevator collars. And let's put the elevator collar going down on this side. And so all I have to do is click that and there we go. The door opens and everything. Oh, that's so cool. So after a little bit of work, I have sort of designed the interior of the elevator space and I really like this. Ah, oh, this is gonna be great. So inside I made it a little bit more spacious by breaking out the blocks. And when we go up, this will take us to the next floor. Oh, which is so cool. I put the elevator in the back here, the collar. When we walk in, we should encounter something very familiar. Ah, yes. A familiar 7x7 seven seven or 9x9 nine nine room, depending on how you look at it. And inside of here, this is where we're going to set up our oil refinery. Now, I'm going to try my best to explain this as simple as possible. To be able to set up yourself a refinery controller, um, you're going to need four refinery outputs. So we are going to be refining oil. So we're going to receive oil from our current setup where we are mining it from the ground with a fluid laser from Industrial Four going. And that is going to be turned into diesel, kerosene, gasoline, and LPG. All of these things I'm going to store in infinite fluid storage tanks. Oh, and when I say infinite tanks, I, I mean supreme black hole tanks, which I mean essentially are infinite. So let's get to building this. And this is going to utilize that creative compressed iron block. Like I said, I wanted to show a way to be able to use all of these creative items. And this is how you would use this along with some heat pipes, which are really nice. So let's set up our refinery. So right back here, I'm gonna place down my base refinery. Then we're gonna have our refinery outputs that go on top of this. Um, and they're gonna have, we're gonna have four because we're gonna have four different sort of fluids that are gonna run into this. 
And then our main fluid, which is going to be put into the bottom of this refinery, is going to be oil. Now, I was just about to set up the reprocessor only to realize that my oil is actually wrong that we are currently generating. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and swap this current ender tank, uh, which was currently producing ad astra fluid, which we no longer need that oil. And we need to get this producing a different type of oil. Instead of a gray laser lens, which I know these look very close, we need to swap this out for a black laser lens. So when I switch this to a black laser lens, we are gonna be producing a different type of oil. This one going to be crude oil, not just oil. So I gotta go ahead and break this ender tank. And what I'm going to do with the ender tank is I'm actually going to drain it out um, into uh, a trash can. And then I can actually start using the fluid that I need for Pneumaticraft. And with that done, I should be able to just put the oil tank right back on here. And now this should start filling up with crude oil instead. So now that my tank contains crude oil, I can just go ahead and pop on a pipe here and then I can start sending oil into my refinery controller. Now, unlike all of the other machines, this needs heat, and you can get heat in a couple of different ways. You can utilize pressure with a vortex tube to actually generate heat, which is how you would typically do this and would sustain enough heat. I think if there are also mods installed, you could potentially also get heat from like a blaze burner and connect heat pipes to the blaze burner. Now, in our case, we have a creative compressed iron block which this allows us to send heat to this refinery controller. And then we can also pipe that heat around just like this to all sides of this. And you really do want to try and cover as much of this real estate as possible with this machine, uh, which yeah, can be kind of ugly to, let's be fair. It can be kind of ugly. I really don't even want to cover the face or the back. I just want to cover the top and the sides here. Um, and I, I do need to connect this around. So with this all done now, we should be able to transfer heat from this block into this. Now, this needs to be over 100 degrees. And if I set this to 120, for example, this should start to heat up to 120. You can see that and maintain that temperature. But I do believe that this does work faster when the temperatures are higher than that. So when they are higher than 100, I believe it does start to refine faster. But notice, we're already starting to produce LPG, gasoline, kerosene, and diesel just with this setup alone. And now this is where I want to set up my Supreme Black Hole tanks, and I want this to automatically start pulling. Oh, and notice we already have a major issue here. Uh, this is trying to send, so I think it is now empty. Uh, but there we go. So we just got to make sure that's disconnected. I'm going to place all of these right here. These are all gonna be connected up, and we just need to tell these, hey, go ahead and pull into here from this side, and these are automatically going to start filling just like this. By pulling, it's gonna automatically start filling with those individual fluids in the back. So now we need to take a thermal pneumatic processing plant and place it down. Now, right now, this is not at temperature in order for it to work, and we need to send this to create lubricant we are going to need access to this diesel. So let's go ahead and get another pipe. And yes, we can just use the regular universal pipes. I just think they look nice being that color. And we need to send this down, but I do want to go ahead and break this up, which is going to happen. And to do that, I'm just going to click this and that is going to disconnect that. So it's not connected there. And we're going to run that into the back of this thermal plant. Um, so this thermal plant is just going to be generating lubricant. That's basically it. So we do need to send that diesel that this is generating into the plant here. And then we also need to provide this with some redstone. Now getting redstone into this, not a huge deal. All we need is an exporter, which is just leading right onto the top, which will be fine. Or we can even lead it to the side. Um, either way, doesn't really matter. I kind of want the fluid uh, that we're going to be producing, aka lube, lubricant. I want that kind of going actually to the side here. So let's just route this over here. And then we'll send the redstone right here. Redstone, just like this. And that should be sending redstone in. Now, we are not reaching our temperature. I think this needs to be like over 300 degrees to produce the lubricant. Um, so let's take a look at the lubricant recipe. Um, it, no, it just needs to be 100. So we just need 1,000 millibuckets of the diesel in order to do this. So let's go ahead and increase this to let's say like 700 degrees. Um, that should start to really accelerate the 
speed at which we're producing this stuff. And you can see the temperature here, and we should be meeting all the requirements. It is going to say, hey, we don't have four of these blocks covered, but these are definitely fine as far as that goes. Um, we have infinite heat, so that's not a huge deal. And then this right here should now have enough heat uh, to be able to produce lubricant. We just have to, or to, yeah, we just need to produce it. There it goes. So it just produced its first bit of lubricant. So let's go ahead and get a, another Supreme black hole tank. And we're going to put lubricant in that. So now that we've grabbed ourselves a bucket of lube, it says born slip slippy. Oh God. Uh, yes. So we now have ourselves a bucket. We should have a Supreme black hole tank ready to go for us. And I'm going to place that right here. And I'm going to put that fluid in it to, to kind of lock it in place. Um, and now we should be able to start making sure we pull that fluid in. And so now anytime this produces lubricant, it's then going to store it right here. Uh, by the way, we can choose whether or not to have a bucket displayed, by the way. Also, I'm pretty sure this is a filter slot. So if you want to filter out the fluid, you put that right here in the center of this tank. Now, in the meantime, we can start to prep up our drill. Now, to be able to make the actual drill bit, which is the whole reason we set this up for the pneumatic hammer, is a thermal pneumatic processing blend, just like this one right here. However, this one's going to have a few other requirements. Also, I went ahead and cranked this up to like the maximum, <laughs> like 2000 degrees is as high as this goes, which is just insanity. And it doesn't really seem like this goes any higher after like a certain point. Um, but anyways, back to the thermal plant. Uh, we need to give a block of diamond here. We also need to maintain a certain amount of PSI in order to make that drill. So let's dive into this drill right here. So it needs to maintain, it looks like nine bar roughly. Um, and it also needs 500 degrees, which we are more than meeting. And we also need eight full buckets of lubricant. So we only have five for right now. I'm going to show you another way we can actually get some lubricant without doing this whole processing plant if you didn't want to. Um, and that is, let's go ahead and get this pressure hooked up in the back. And we'll set this to nine bar exactly. There we go. So that should pressurize to nine bar. And then the heat is more than sufficient for this. We just need to get that lubricant. Before this, I just need a few emeralds, just like so. And then we need some sort of tank. Now, I should be able to set this as a fluid tank and then set this as an inventory. And then when I go in here, we should have the option to potentially buy lubricant. So, funny enough, I can actually request eight buckets of lubricant to go into this inventory. And that should be all of this process kind of made moot. I know, I just wanted to show how cool this is, and I, I we might be able to use some of these things in the future. So let's take a look in uh, into this a bit more. Um, so we have all the stuff in the inventory. Do we have enough to buy the eight buckets? So let's do eight, and it looks like we have enough to request eight buckets. I wanna place my order, and then we're gonna see the drone come down, grab all of the emeralds needed for this, and it should fill up that tank or that inventory. I mean, it's, it's that cool. So this should definitely fill up with lubricant and has enough pressure. Come on, there it is. Look at that, eight buckets. So basically, yeah, all of this stuff that I just showed you could be done and we're about to hit eight buckets here. Um, but yes, it does cost a lot of emeralds technically to be able to do this, but here we go. Drill, let's go ahead and make that drill bit. It needs a diamond block in order to make this version. So just a diamond block, we put that in there and Enough pressure with also enough heat should allow us to get that drill bit. And then we have a whole other step that we have to do. But I tell you, this thing is worth it. And there we go. There's our drill bit. Moving on to the next step, let's go ahead and make ourselves the unassembled netherite drill bit. To do that, we just combine it with netherite. And now we need to assemble this. Now, this does need the drill program. And I don't remember if this actually works. Um, with both the sets, by the way, this is something that can happen with the pneumatic. It kind of goes trippy here. Um, but I don't think this will allow me to just put this in and work. It might. Okay, so it does. It's just going to drill and then it's going to complete it and be good to go. So when you do have the uh, laser drill assembly, it should be able to do both of those processes. And there we go. There's the netherite drill bit. And this thing is crazy. This is the best bit. Yes, it is the best bit. And now if we shift right click on this, we can put that drill in here. And now we have the option to scroll and uh, hold down shift 
and scroll wheel. And you can see we have a vein miner full. We have a one by one, we have a one by two, one by three, and a three by three across. And we have a vein miner specifically for ores slash logs. And then you have a vein miner, a, a dig for three by three, but then you also have a vein miner that will just mine whatever, right? Um, so this is really cool and all, but we can put enchanted books in here and it will take on those effects. For example, if I want this to silk touch, I will just grab a silk touch book out of my receptacle here and anything that can be silk touched, uh, I, I guess one way to test this, right, is this ore right here. Um, right now, if I was to break it, it's going to not give me the ore, but if I put the book in here, it will, when mining, it will give me the silk touch version. Now, that noise can be controlled through here, and if we go into Pneumaticraft, it's probably best if we do this to definitely turn down the Pneumaticraft hammer. It, the noises are pretty loud and pretty obnoxious. Um, so, now, when I mine, it's going to be a lot better. There we go. Now it's not noisy at all, which I do prefer. But notice we were able to silk touch, which is exactly what I want. It looked pretty slow though, right? It, it, it does look pretty slow. So let's speed this thing up. So all we need is a charge station and to max upgrade this thing, we're gonna put 25 volume upgrades in it. That is going to give it a ton of space. Um, and then we're also going to need 10 speed upgrades to max out the speed of the hammer and then a magnet upgrade, which is honestly kind of cool. Uh, the magnet upgrade when vein mining will cause all broken blocks to be dropped at the position of the block that was mined originally. This thing is pretty cool and it's super helpful so you don't like throw items everywhere. And there we go. We now have a hammer that, yes, when charged, which is going to take a while to fully charge it up, uh, but this thing it mines incredibly fast. I need to find somewhere to test this. Hmm, how about the mining dimension? So if you're charging this bad boy up, let's put this to the test. So right now I have bar that is charging up and I just wanna show you the couple of modes. So this is your normal breaking mode. It's not the fastest thing in the world uh, with, I mean, this is also with max speed upgrades, but this isn't what make this, makes this tool really good. This is what makes this tool really good. The vein miner mode is amazing. So yes, you can see it is just chomping away and I'm not holding down the vein miner key. If I was to hold down the vein miner key, it doesn't really do anything except for what appears to be voiding the blocks. Um, it, it does seem like they're dropping. I, I think they're just going underneath my feet, but... There we go. We basically have a really nice vein miner. And then there's also this mode, which is just super convenient to be able to just swap to that. But I just, I just want to use it as my silk touch tool. So there's all the different modes. Um, this is really useful for mining. And then we have the one that's exclusive to just uh, mining ores. So just like that alone. So it doesn't mine anything else. It just mines out the ores. But I think this thing is really neat and also kind of shows off some of the other cool things that we can do with Pneumaticraft. Oh yeah, and I think I almost forgot, right? You can put over enchanted books inside of here. For example, if I put fortune in here, now this is a fortune tool. And anytime that I want this to, for example, go back to silk touch, I just put a silk touch book in there and that's how it works. Now it doesn't take efficiency or things like that. It's just solely going to be those two things. Now I do still have one more task that I want to get done today, and that is the fact that I need to upgrade my gear. So I've gone through and I have God forged and enchanted this to the brim. So you can see right here, these are all kind of set up. It's not amazing, uh, but these stats, I don't, I don't even have anything socketed in here just yet, but I do want to eternal Stella this because it does have a durability and you can see the durability is well, not that high. Uh, now you can put upgrades in these that will actually rejuvenate the durability over time. Um, and use pressure to do that. But instead we can just make these infinite. So we can put all of our things in here, put our Stellas in, and now these are going to be Eternal Stellad. Oh, I love Eternal Stellas. This is so nice. And the fact that we have so many of them is also very nice. So with all of this equipped, I now have white hearts and I haven't even put any kind of upgrades in here to in, into the sockets for like vitality and stuff. So our hearts may still <laughs> increase from there. For example, my perfect brawler gem that I ended up getting as our quest reward for the all the mod star. Let's go ahead and put that on there. That's gonna give me plus 10 health. And so now I should have almost an entire white bar of health. Oh my gosh. So now you may be wondering, is this gear actually better than the all the mods gear? And I will say they both have a use case, whereas this is more of battle gear, the uh, the sort of the maxed out all the modium gear. 
that is definitely battle ready gear. Battle and mining gear works both fine. This also works with mining as well. Uh, but I will say that um, this gear has more functionality, the stuff from Pneumaticraft, uh, allowing me to, for example, be able to go into any sort of dimension um, and kind of find, for example, like the frog house, right, that we've been to before. We can go in here and we can locate any of the hidden chests throughout this entire area. So if I go ahead and I enable my block tracker and I turn on two different things, if I just turn on inventories, right, I will probably be able to find every chest that I might have forgotten. Um, there are chests hidden all over the place. Look at this. This is a hidden chest, right? That was right here. Um, there are chests that are down here, chests right here. And, and we should be able to now see and locate every chest. Uh, now, you won't be able to see the contents of it, what's inside of them until you actually open them. And then it will show the contents. Uh, but this is still kind of just crazy. The fact that you can just find every chest located throughout and also every spawner located throughout. Um, this feature alone is great for exploring. So with that, let's take one more trip up the elevator. Oh boy. And <laughs> head into our Pneumaticraft processing area. And I want to say thank you guys. Thank you guys for watching today's episode. And if you did enjoy, be sure to click that subscribe button if you haven't already. And give this video a huge thumbs up. There is still more to come with all the mods 9, so I hope you guys are excited for that as I do continue to push out more content related to this particular pack as I'm having a blast playing it. And I hope you guys are enjoying watching it. So, more to come, so stay tuned, click that subscribe button, and well, it's now time to thank the amazing supporter of today's episode. And that huge thanks is going to go out to, if I can spell things right, going out to Goliath1. Thank you so much, by the way, for your amazing support, by the way, over on the Discord, and becoming a Discord Premium member and supporting in one of the best ways possible. Also, getting access to the world downloads and supporter servers. So, guys, I thank you so very much. I'll see you in the next one. And as always, thanks for watching. Bye!